on September 15, 2017, having completed a 20-year mission studying the system of Saturn. NASA had the Cassini spacecraft enter Saturn's atmosphere for one last daring mission to preserve the system for future exploration. Three, two, one, and liftoff of the Cassini spacecraft on a billion mile trek to Saturn. Two decades ago, Cassini left Earth on a bold new mission to go where no spacecraft had gone before. And the Cassini spacecraft is on its way to Saturn. Cassini sent back incredible images of Saturn, listened to its magnetic field, tracked a rare planet-wide storm, but most of all, Cassini gave us a perspective of Saturn we never had before. A lot of the discovery we've made with Cassini is because we are up close and personal, right up there, um, you know, 10,000 kilometers off Titan's limb. But there's no competition between a space-based mission like Hubble compared to a spacecraft mission like Cassini. So from the Earth, we can only see Saturn tilted a little bit towards us by about 27 degrees at most. So we're not able to really look down on the poles, but one of the things that Cassini's been able to do is to fly over the North Pole and over the South Pole and give us great views of the hexagon on Saturn's North Pole and the high velocity winds which are circulating right around the poles themselves, similar to a hurricane eye wall on the Earth. Being this close, NASA found Saturn's system to be more complex and dynamic than it could have ever imagined. Yeah, so this was another surprising thing that was discovered by Cassini, was that the rings uh, are not as flat as we originally thought. In fact, there's places where there are uh, big pillars of material which are being thrown up uh, away from the main ring plane. And we believe that those are due to the gravitational action of some of the moons that are passing by and causing disruption. Uh, in the rings. We see other features in the rings as well, such as the uh, propeller features, which are dark shadows that move along the, the rings like spokes of a bicycle wheel. And Cassini has been able to uh, image these in detail that was uh, never seen before. The organization of Saturn's rings by her moons were brought to us in spectacular detail by Cassini. Here's the moon Daphnis creating waves as it passes by. This is Pan which gets its unusual shape from orbiting within Saturn's rings. It's actually the reason for the Anki gap in the A-ring. As Pan, Pan's large enough that as it orbits around Saturn, it clears out the um, ring material, and then and you get a gap. And that's probably how the moon may, be, may have formed. It accreted that material as it, was, as it got bigger and bigger and bigger, it started accreting more and more and more of that ring material. And now you have this really neat looking flying saucer moon called Pan. While Cassini gave us a new perspective on Saturn's rings and smaller moons, her larger moons held even more surprises and discoveries. So uh, Titan is Saturn's largest moon, and it's the only moon in the solar system that has a significant atmosphere. And that means that it's got lots going on there. It has processes that we see uh, nowhere else other than the Earth, like rainfall that's creating lakes and seas. And Cassini has been able to uh, image through the clouds, through this uh, hazy, opaque atmosphere of Titan, and image right down to the surface. And by using a combination of its cameras, and also the radar that's carried on Cassini, We've been able to reveal the outlines and even the depth of these lakes and even get a radar bounce from the bottom of the, of the lakes to tell how deep they are. The conditions here had to be studied, not only up close, but in depth. So they sent the passenger on board, the Huygens Lander. Built by the European Space Agency, it was the furthest landing attempt of any human-made craft. It plunged through Titan's thick atmosphere and gave us a view of this alien landscape which looked very familiar to our own. This is the actual footage of Huygens' ascent to Titan's surface. Huygens almost didn't make it. Years before the landing, a problem was discovered with its telemetry. Left unsolved, all the data would never reach Earth. They found a narrow window for the descent that delayed the landing, but it meant Cassini would receive Huygens' data before going out of range. And the mission was saved. Now we know that Titan supports a prebiotic environment 
that is similar to the conditions of ancient Earth. Instead of liquid water, it has liquid methane, forming lakes, seas, and cloud formations in its atmosphere. Cassini detected a new molecule, polypropylene, which is commonly used on Earth to make plastics, but forms naturally in the atmosphere of Titan. The next moon is Enceladus. It's an icy moon that NASA has found to be ejecting mass amounts of water from its southern pole. So much water, in fact, that it's formed its own icy ring around Saturn. This means there's a liquid ocean beneath the surface, and it's being pushed out by heat. But the only real way to know was to boldly fly Cassini through the plumes. And uh, Cassini uh, eventually uh, dived through the plumes of Enceladus, one of the small moons that's geysering water vapor out into space from the interior. And using its uh, instruments, uh, types of mass spectrometer that are carried on board, is able to determine that these are not just pure water ice, but in fact some of these ice chips have uh, salt grains inside them and even organic grains inside. So there's obviously a lot going on deep down in Enceladus's water ocean that's, uh, that's there inside and we're able to sample that because it's being uh, jetted out into space for us to collect with the Cassini spacecraft. Being no stranger to danger, NASA also flew Cassini in between Saturn and its rings. They weren't sure if the gap was completely empty and even though a collision with even a small rock could end the mission, it was still somewhere worth exploring and pushing the spacecraft to do what no other probe had done before. But what we found when we went through the first time, the, the, it was pretty much empty and that was unexpected. We assumed we'd find ring particles, but it was quite empty. And so we were able to success, you know, successfully um, orchestrate this 22 times, just increasing our knowledge of Saturn and the rings because we're so close to observe. That's right, Cassini didn't do this just one time, it did it 22 times, with each pass giving us more knowledge about how these rings formed than ever before. This was the view of the rings from within. We saw waves in the A-ring. A flurry of detail from the B-ring. And this is a composite image of Saturn as Cassini zoomed just above its atmosphere, providing with unprecedented detail of the cloud formations. After 20 years in space, traveling 1 billion miles to study Saturn's system, and going places where no spacecraft had gone before, Cassini was running out of fuel. To prevent contaminating fragile environments like Titan and Enceladus, NASA maneuvered Cassini for a final mission into Saturn's atmosphere. So on September 15, 2017, Cassini entered Saturn's upper atmosphere. While her instruments gathered data from sampling the air, her thrusters fought against the incoming pressures. They weren't designed for atmospheric flight, and no one knew how long the probe could stay upright. The thrusters heroically kept the antenna pointed towards Earth, transmitting Cassini's final data. Because there's no oxygen in the air, Cassini didn't burn up. She melted and vaporized, becoming part of the planet it came to explore. These are among the final images from Cassini as it plunged into Saturn. The spacecraft is gone, but Cassini leaves behind a legacy of data that will further planetary sciences for years to come. And so that's a huge legacy it's left, and the amounts of data anywhere. If you want to study any type of planetary astronomy, you can do it practically with Saturn system. You've got the gas giant, you've got the rings, you've got the magnetosphere, you've got the icy surfaces, so the, the surface effects. You have Titan's atmosphere. Um, there's all kinds of fields you can study. No matter who, what you're doing and what you're interested, you can find it in the Saturn system. <laughs>